All right, and we're back today. We're going to be looking at chapter 13.1. The chapter is called Trails West. You're going to want to have your textbook available to do a little bit of further study on this. The pages we're going to be focusing on today are 419 to 423. Welcome back. All right, so let's review. Where have we left off? So if you recall from last week, Andrew Jackson was elected president in 1828. And during Andrew Jackson's presidency, Native Americans were forced to move from their land near and around Georgia, way down here, to west of the Mississippi River. So kind of in this area right here. Andrew Jackson moved the border of the United States westward to the edge of Louisiana Territory, which would be about right here. This is a map from about 1825. So now we are going to learn that thousands of adventurers and pioneers followed trails to the west to settle the land and hopefully get rich and find their fortune. Doesn't that sound nice? So right here, you'll recognize this map. This is in your chapter here. But this has um, illustrations of several of the trails that these pioneers or these adventurers used. So they're color-coded here. You see the Mormon Trail, the Oregon Trail, the Santa Fe Trail, the Spanish Trail, a whole bunch of these trails here. Um, uh, fun fact, there used to be an educational video game when I was a kid called Oregon Trail. And uh, we used to play it a lot at school. I'm trying to see if I can find a newer version of that to share with you guys. It was very, very primitive in terms of graphics and gameplay, but it was, it was really fun. At least it was back in the day. And also, we say Oregon Trail, but it's really Oregon Trail. We say Oregon because there's a little town near here that's pronounced Oregon. But it's Oregon Trail. I'll say it wrong the entire time. All right, so early pioneers and settling the West. So mountain men, ooh, I like that sound. They were the first and earliest pioneers to join or to journey West and beyond the Rocky Mountains. So mountain men, they what did they do? They trapped animals for their furs. Furs were very, very valuable in those days. In fact, in some places you could use a beaver pelt or beaver fur as a, a, a substitute currency. It was used as like almost like money. You could trade things for it like you would money. Uh, they also traded furs for supplies, and they provided new information about the land and the trails that headed west. So you got to remember that very, very few people had been out in this area before. At least very few Americans had been out there. So people didn't really know uh, what was in front of them if they planned a journey out to the west. So these people were very helpful in that, the mountain men were. The South Pass through the Rocky Mountains was discovered by a, a fellow named Jedediah Smith. That's him up here in this. I think it's a watercolor or something like that. And unlike Lewis and Clark's travel to the north, the South Pass through the Rockies was wide and low so wagons could fit, and it got less snow. So that's going to definitely be more attractive for people that are trying to get out west rather than go through the, the high mountain passes that are snow-covered and narrow and make it very, very difficult for them. So the red line here shows the southern route or route, however you want to pronounce it. So typically I think of mountain men as... Uh, ugly, dirty, unwashed, but there's some pictures of some mountain men too right here that prove that they could definitely be very, very handsome. And right here you see that uh, even going on the South Pass, there's still a little bit of snow. That is ice and snow in that poor man's beard. But yeah, definitely very handsome. Uh, early pioneers in settling west. Many believe that land to the west was their chance to make money. So some Americans even believed that it was their right to take land away from the Native Americans who lived on the territory but did not own it. So we're seeing right here even more mistreatment of Native Americans in this country's history. So land speculators, they would go out there and they would, they would buy land at really, really cheap prices, and then they would sell it to pioneers to make a profit. They might buy a huge parcel of land and break it up into little pieces and sell small plots that way. And many settlers wanted, to, uh, wanted land to build farms out in the West. Traders went west for furs and other good, and manufacturers and merchants hoped to make money selling items to settlers opening new communities. So here's one of the trails. This is the Santa Fe Trail. Raise your hand if you've ever been to New Mexico. I'm raising my hand, but you can't see that right now. I've been to Santa Fe before. It's a really cool town. Uh, the Santa Fe uh, Trail on this map is the yellow line right here. You can see the key right here. So it started in Franklin, Missouri. And it ended in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Well, Mexico, you have, you have to know, Mexico gained its freedom from Spain in 1821. 
and Mexico opened the land to American traders. There were very, very few people living in what's now the American Southwest. So Mexico opened its doors for American traders. A fellow by the name of William Becknell was one of the first traders to head there. And the trade route he established became the Santa Fe Trail. So covered wagons were used by traders to haul goods. Basically, it was just a wagon with wheels and a frame on the top with a canvas or cloth covering that kept uh, the elements away from whatever prized goods you had in the, in, the, in the back. William Becknell and other traders made huge profits. That means they got rich. And hundreds of families soon then followed this route to settle there. Who knows? I mean, they were going out there for the chance to make some money. The Oregon Trail. Notice that the Oregon Trail is in red. Yes, this is the one that um, there was a video game named after. And I even remember from that video game. You should actually look that up, the video game Oregon Trail. See if you can find it too. But I remember some of these stops along the way in that game, Fort Laramie for one. So the Oregon Trail was about 2,000 miles long. And it went from Independence, Missouri. Uh, it's by Kansas City if you've ever been there. To Oregon country. Many travelers were missionaries looking to convert Native Americans to their religion. And the first pioneers reported that Oregon Territory was a place where the sun always shone and wheat grew six feet high. I always think this is kind of curious because I, when I think of the Pacific Northwest up here, Oregon and Washington, I always think of it as being cloudy and rainy. So that was misleading to say that the sun always shone. This led thousands of people following the trail west, which we now call Oregon fever. That is not a disease. It just means that there was this great interest in moving out west to Oregon country. And then we have the Mormon Trail. The Mormon Trail is in orange on here. You can see the Mormon Trail overlaps the Oregon Trail for a portion of it right now. But you see it branches off and ends in Salt Lake City. So remember, most pioneers traveled west for wealth and money. The Mormons, those are members of a church founded by a guy named Joseph Smith in 1830. They traveled west for religious reasons. In 1847, about 148 Mormon pioneers followed much of the Oregon Trail to Salt Lake City, which is in Utah, it's the capital of Utah, where they settled. And many Mormons sought a life without persecution for their beliefs. To this day, uh, I believe there are more Mormons in Utah than any other state. I could be wrong about that, but when I think of Utah, I think there are a lot of Mormons in Utah. All right, so this is the last slide of this presentation. We have uh, three video clips on here that I would like you to watch. This one's, I don't know, seven minutes, and the rest of them are maybe two minutes. And then when you are finished, click here. This is going to take you to a Google form that I would like you to fill out and submit. It's just a little bit of a, oh, there's a covered wagon for you. It's just a little bit of review from this chapter. I hope to see you guys very soon. Thank you for your time.